What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Now guys, this is gonna be a different video. This isn't gonna be me eating food. Sorry to disappoint you right now. I'm gonna try to go about this with as little editing, as little cuts as possible. Uh, I just wanna make this as raw and authentic as possible. This is a touchy issue and this is something that uh, really affects me or did affect me a lot at one point. And it's been something that's been coming up a lot lately. A lot of you have been messaging me, emailing me, asking me about my story. Just because I did talk about it a lot in my NRC recovery videos, if you guys haven't seen those, definitely go check them out if you haven't already. So what we're talking about today, guys, is gynecomastia. So most of you who clicked on this video pretty much know what it is already, so I don't really need to educate you on it, but for those who don't, this is what gynecomastia actually is. Something that sucks a lot. According to Wikipedia, gynecomastia is a common disorder of the endocrine system in which there's a non-cancerous increase of the male breast tissue. People call it a lot of things, everybody. Man boobs, bitch tits. Trust me, I was called a lot of names in my day, but I'll get into that in the later part of the video. So that's essentially what it is, guys man boobs. I would say that nine times out of 10, most gynecomastia cases actually come when you're going through puberty, just because your hormones are all over the place. And so uh, basically what happens is when your estrogen levels are higher, again, when you're going through puberty, that's when you're gonna see an increase in breast tissue. And uh, most guys, it goes away. That's the biggest thing. So gynecomastia will come and it will go within around one to two years of actually having it. Um, that's something that, again, will happen through puberty. Now speaking for myself, that is exactly what happened. Uh, reflecting on uh, when I actually noticed the problem, right around when I was 11 to 12 years old, uh, I was fine and then I started getting into, I remember like my 13th birthday and um, I remember being out at the pool and I was, uh, I had a bunch of friends over and that was the first time really like I took off my shirt and I was, it was right around the time where I was, I was noticeably overweight and everything. And I remember a girl looking at me and um, you know, she's around the same age as me and her just like wondering, like giving me that weird eye and like just, and I, I looked it back at her and like, I had never really thought about it before just because um, I wasn't really looking at my body all that much and specifically looking at my nipples. My nipples were the biggest part there. It wasn't just the actual like full on um, uh, pectoral muscle. It was, for me, it was just my nipples. Granted, I was already used to having like man boobs and everything like that. Um, but my nipples were, um, up until that point, like again, I'd never really thought about it before, but my nipples were big, like very big. Like here's a picture of how big they got. Granted, that was when I was 15 years old and it was a few years afterwards, but at 13, they were pretty big. So that pool incident from that point was was like the big eye opener for me that I had a problem and that uh, people around me were starting to notice it. I mean, even at one point, my sister, um, who didn't know that I struggled with, uh, with that condition and with um, uh, the psychological thoughts about it, uh, being so insecure about it, she kind of pointed it out a few times. I got called names at school all the time, um, nipple boy, uh, bitch tits, like all this stupid stuff. I mean, kids are just ruthless. I mean, a lot of you have probably gotten bullied before, so you know how it is. I would say that with gynecomastia, it's really hard because, um, you know, you're, you're insecure about something uh, that a lot of people don't really get. A lot of you will understand this too because we all have our own insecurities. Uh, a, a big inspiration for me for making this video is my boy, Mr. Brian Turner, uh, who uh, has an awesome inspirational story about his acne treatment that he went through. And that's a, another reason why I, I wanted to make this video. Another um, big inspiration for me to make this video is because uh, of how much uh, Brian's gone through with his struggles and everything. And so I feel like a lot of you that um, have gone through gynecomastia will share similar uh, stories as me and um, you know, we'll, we'll understand and relate to, to what I went through. And, um, but anyways, you know, just getting back to the point really where it, it, it really, it was something I struggled with a lot. And I would say upwards until, uh, you know, the, the ages of, you know, 15 to 16, I, I knew that I had a problem. And uh, I went to Wikipedia, I went to all these different sites and saw a lot of different pictures. Uh, saw a lot of cases of gynecomastia. Uh, most of them, unfortunately, were the ones that I saw uh, were bodybuilders that were obviously tapering with steroids, with uh, testosterone, and um, most of those cases just result from uh, guys not taking aromatase inhibitors. You can call it estrogen blockers, pretty much the same thing, um, which you know prevent gynecomastia from actually forming. But that's 
the rare cases of, of what I referred to earlier of people that aren't in their teens that do get gynecomastia are typically bodybuilders. So again, like I said earlier, a lot of people send me emails, a lot of people message me about gynecomastia. Do I have it? What can I do? Uh, the biggest thing here, guys, is uh, if you do suspect something to be a problem, see a doctor, see your endocrinologist, see anybody, see a medical physician. I can't stress that enough. No one can really diagnose you with gynecomastia online. I'm sorry, that's just my belief. My second biggest piece of advice is that if you've noticed that you've had enlarged breast tissue, your nipples have gotten bigger, it's been that way for a few months, give it some time. Don't go rushing into thinking that something is like the worst possible outcome or the worst possible case here, which is obviously gynecomastia, give it some time. I'd say if it doesn't normalize any time over a year to two years, then we might have a problem. I think what really hurts guys a lot, and it's certainly with me again kind of relating it back to myself, is actually um, admitting to the people around me that it affected me as much as it did. My awakening really, or the epiphany, where it all came out, gynecomastia played a huge role in my anorexia and uh, my eating disorder, how I actually got to it because I thought that losing weight would actually uh, make the gyno go away. And actually guys, it doesn't, it does not. For me, it actually made it worse. And this is actually a picture of me um, after I had lost about 65 to 70 pounds and it made it more apparent. And so that's another big misconception that I wanna clear up is that gynecomastia, um, losing weight won't necessarily get rid of it. Now for me, how I got help with it, I honestly couldn't take it. A year or two after I had gotten diagnosed with anorexia, I was in my doctor's office and um, they kept they kept just you know saying like, Eric, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you normal? Why aren't you wanting to put on weight? Why aren't you, uh, why do you wanna keep losing weight? Why do you wanna be at the point that you're at right now? And I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. And I said that the biggest thing for me, guys, is, um, you know, this. And I took my shirt off, and it was just my doctor and I. Um, so I was able to talk to my doctor first and tell her, hey, like, look, this is this is something that's I'm struggling with a lot. This is why, um, you know, what do you think about it? Do you know about this? Like, do you guys? And she's like, Eric, guys come to me all the time and say this stuff, like. I'm a doctor. Let's go tell your dad. So basically, we brought my dad into the other room, and um, we all talked together. and uh, And it was it was awkward because I was having to tell my own father um, something like this, where it's like it, it may not really seem much to you guys, but for me, um, to to talk to my dad like that about such like an issue, like I was talking about my nipples my nipples. It's something that um, a lot of you take for granted. I should say for those of you who don't have gonna come you, it's something you guys take for granted. Like nipples, um, being able to take your shirt off at the beach. I live in San Diego, California. I live in San Diego, California, and I always wanted to, when I was losing weight, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the beach, I'm gonna be able to go hang out with my friends, go surfing, and I was scared shitless not the other way around, not the way I thought I was gonna be after losing all that weight. Um, I was scared shitless because there was another thing that I had to be insecure about. And so I told my dad and everything and um, he, I mean, I broke down and cried and um, and that was like my, my epiphany really where I was able to, to, to tell everybody. And uh, you know, I should say, tell my doctor and my dad and everything. But after that, um, you know, I was, when and saw my endocrinologist, I was diagnosed, well, I guess you can call it a diagnosis of, of gynecomastia. I ended up getting surgery for it. And uh, it was a very painful surgery. Uh, it took a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of recovery time. And um, just with me and my past and everything, I dealt with a lot of uh, fluid buildup after that. And um, that was just because I was told I could not exercise for two to three months after I had gotten the surgery and that was uh, big like just read just everything in my head I got so much anxiety over it so basically I turned into uh, as you know pretty much a sloth and would sleep for 18 hours a day and you know just yeah it was just it was just a horrible time in my life but that's again all of my anorexia videos if you guys want to go check those out feel free um, yeah guys that's pretty much my experience with kind of command I felt like I just wanted to share uh, some 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 insight for you guys and hopefully uh, some of you can um, you know relate to it before I sign off I want to let you guys know what it looks like today it's not the prettiest thing in the world but 
so you guys can kind of see the incision still. It's something I'll have for the rest of my life, but he cut in right there. Incisions like right there. So anyways guys, so that's been the video. I hope it's been informative, it's been insightful. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below uh, if you guys have experience with it, if, if there's anything you found relatable, uh, share your story. I always love hearing feedback and everything. So if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, thumbs up, the usual. Follow me on my social media if you haven't already. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. You know the drill. Oh yeah, and again, before I sign off, to all the trolls that think that they're gonna be unique with all the name calling, I've heard it all before. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Go right back. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? Uh